The most common way to solve a quadratic equation is to solve it by factoring. And this whole idea, this whole concept, hinges on something called the zero property. And here's what it says. It says if you can create a product and your product is equal to zero, then uh, just based off of the properties of real numbers, then either the first term has to be zero or the second term has to be zero guaranteed. And this isn't always true with every operation. For example, if you had addition, there, there's a way you could add two numbers to get zero where neither one of them are zero. Maybe like negative five and five, they add to zero. But uh, if you have multiplication here, there's no way in the world to have a product be zero unless either the first term was zero or the second term was zero. Because if you have a product of two non-zero terms, the product is not going to be zero either. It would have to be zero times something, and then you would get zero for the product. So we can exploit this property of real numbers to help us solve quadratic equations. And here's, so here's how the steps go, if you want to jot these down. So what we're going to do is, first of all, make sure our quadratic equation is set equal to zero. It has to be equal to zero in order for us to use this zero property. There's no such thing as a six property or a seven property. It's only for zero. And so once your quadratic equation is set equal to zero, then you're going to factor the side that has the polynomial on it. Um, now this isn't always possible, but if it is, we're going to factor it. And what, what does it mean when you factor something? Well, you're going to create a product. And so if you have a product equal to zero, either the first factor equals zero or the second factor equals zero. But both of those individual factors are linear. So what we can do next is set each of those individual guys equal to zero, which we can solve quite easily. And there would be our solutions to the quadratic equation. So set it equal to zero, factor it, and then set each individual factor equal to zero. Now, uh, before we get into some examples, I made a little side comment here. If I said, if it's possible to factor, if it can't be factored, we do have some other techniques that might be able to help, but we'll cover those in uh, a later video in the course. Um, but for now, we're just gonna solve by factoring only. So we're gonna assume most of our quadratics here are gonna factor. So here's an example. Uh, we have x squared plus 3x minus 10 equals zero. I want to find the x's that make this equal zero, that make the equation be true. And so what I've done is I've already set this guy equal to zero, and we are going to try to factor the left-hand side. I'm going to create a product here. All right, we're pretty good at factoring. This has a leading coefficient of one, so I'll probably do trial and error here. I know my leading terms have to be an x and an x. And then I'm looking for something that multiplies to 10, actually negative 10, that would add to positive three. So what multiplies to 10? Well, one and 10 and two and five, and that's about it, right? So uh, which of these could possibly add up to three? Well, the two and the five could add up to three if the signs were right. So I'm gonna put a two and a five, and I'm gonna see if I can fit the pluses and minuses to make this be a positive three where the product is negative 10. So to get a sum of positive three, I think we'd have to have plus five and minus two. And lucky for us, negative two times five does in fact give us negative 10. So this is how the quadratic factors. So these are the same equation, just written in a different way. And if a product equals zero, here's the zero property, then either the first uh, factor equals zero or the second factor equals zero. So we'll take x minus two equals zero, or x plus five equals zero. One of those has to be true, because if your product equals zero, as we said earlier, one of these guys has to be zero. So either x is equal to positive two, if you add two to the right, or x would be equal to negative five, if you subtract five to the right. So here's your two solutions to this quadratic equation. Uh, when you're done, you can go back and check your answer. It's quite simple to do. You can just take one of these x's or both of them and substitute them back in for x. And we'll just try a quick one. 
uh, what's 2 squared plus 3 times 2 minus 10? 2 squared is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 4 plus 6 makes 10. 10 minus 10 does in fact give us 0. So this really is a solution and uh, you can try this if you want to but negative 5 would also be a solution. So this is the hands down most popular and common way to solve a quadratic equation. Uh, you factor it and you set your individual factors equal to 0 and solve the individual uh, linear equations to get your solution for the quadratic equation.